Hey everyone, welcome to Shunya One. It's episode 192, uh, and I'm here having a conversation with Deepak Gudapalli, who's the founder and CEO of Head Digital Works. Now, Head Digital is actually a big conglomerate today, uh, but they've started out as a small startup in the digital space. You probably have heard of them or their products because uh, over the last 17 years, Deepak and his team have built out some amazing brands, uh, which pretty much formed the original real money gaming industry in India. So companies like uh, and products like Ace23, Cricket.com, Fanfight, all of these things are part of the Head Digital Works entity. And uh, I had a very fun, uh, very interesting conversation with Deepak where he shared everything from his early days of how he got into this business, how Rami became an online gaming, uh, I would say, uh, you know, destination for so many people. And of course, the challenges and regulatory issues and so many other responsible gaming uh, guidances that he had to follow to build his company. Uh, it was a really interesting conversation. I'm sure you'll love it. So let's take a break and come back and chat with Deepak. Hello! It's been a great week on the IBM Podcast Network. This week, we have a crossover episode of The Habit Coach and Explain Like I'm 10, where Ashton and Meghna discuss the role of politicians and power of the citizens. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam talks to Akash Goel and Sandeep Rao from Investment, a signal-based trading platform. They talk about how a scientific data-driven approach can help us achieve our targets. On the Filter Coffee podcast, Karthik and Soumya Ashok, a journalist at Print India, discuss the possibilities of second urbanization after the Indus Valley civilization. On Cock and Bull, Cyrus, Ayushi and Sriram talk about the hashtag RIP Cartoon Network trend following Cartoon Network's merger with Warner Brothers. And on the Advertiser's Guide to the Galaxy, Karthik analyzes the evolution of Jaguar's lighting products. Once again, don't forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcast.com. We have some exciting new merch out there for you. Also, do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And do remember to spread the word about these shows and any other shows you might be listening to. Appreciate them, rate them, and review them wherever you are listening to them. You can also check out all our other shows on youtube.com slash IVM Podcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week. Volvo XC40 Recharge, Bumble, Heads Up for Tales, Kotak Privy League Programme, and HDFC Mutual Fund. Thanks, guys. Without you, this would not be possible. Hey, hi, Deepak. How are you doing? Welcome to Shunya One. Hi, thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thanks here. so much. Thanks so much for being here. And of course, uh, you know, like I was sharing when we were catching up earlier, uh, we are a podcast about, you know, entrepreneurship stories. We are a podcast about going from zero to one, as the name suggests. Uh, but today, talking to you here about, you know, uh, overall what Head Digital is doing and all the products that you have in the market and how long you've been in the business, I think it will be very interesting to sort of understand, take a little step back, hear from you, what made you sort of get into this business? What made you, what, what was the original inspiration? What were the initial challenges? And just recap your story, if you can, a little bit for set, everyone listening in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think uh, my journey uh, last uh, 17 years since I actually ventured into, into this. Uh, let, maybe I should start with the fact that, you know, I come from a background of a business family. So I, I, I always has this aspiration to run a business, build a business. Uh, I've seen my grandfather uh, and, and my father and et cetera and stuff. So, so I think it's all in the blood that you know you want to build businesses. Right. And uh, and in, I, I think I, the it's a it's an idea that changed the world around me. You know, uh, 80, 17 years back, when I was uh, studying my masters in London, uh, I I used to work, you know, do part-time jobs, uh, earn, earn a few bucks every day, come back home, sit with a bunch of friends, play some cards at, in, the, in the room. And um, I, I come from a family of Rami players, you know, my mom, my mom taught me how to play Rami very early in my life. Uh, and that's when, uh, one, one night when we were actually playing cards in, in, in the room after a long day, uh, there was this one guy, uh, one friend of mine who was always in front of the computer 
playing solitaire on the computer if you remember in uh, yes of course five uh, that was a very popular game on windows people used to play a lot of solitaire and and i said yeah. to him why are you playing on the computer why don't you join us and he said i lo- i just love playing on the computer and that's when the idea stuck and and what's the game he was playing he was playing solitaire and i know for a fact that the game of rummy was a very popular game in india especially right. family friends uh, i i i started my engineering here even in my college we used to play though though it was for small money and and stuff but but the game i know is a right. very popular game that's when the idea stuck why not from me on the computer and uh, right. i came back after my masters i came back to india uh, figuring out what to do in life etc and stuff so i said why don't i try this you know why don't i do a project uh, build a game and sell it to microsoft that they can put it on like on on the windows platform that was the first thought that right. came and and if you remember uh, in those days there were the cd roms where people used to put on a computer pc and and play Got it. Like people used to buy those cd roms now it's Got all it. ps5s and downloads but but that's where gaming started and right. and the initial thought was to build a game of rummy that i can sell on cd roms and, and make some money so with whatever pocket money i made with whatever uh, uh, thanks to my mother uh, my mom who actually gave me a few lakhs and said okay go try it so started right. up with a couple of rented computers in a in a in a room under the water tank it's probably a 100 100 square feet room uh two rented computers computer each uh, about 2500 rupees rent per month wow. and, and a couple of wow. so i called up a friend who was a who was just starting to uh learn some software or java programming and and i said can we do this i said very well yes let's try you know then we, we started on this project to to build and, and i think it took us about a couple of months before we actually built a Uh, designed a a, a digital t- a table and a screen where people where you could play on me and then realized uh, the game is a very complicated game and then you know it's very hard for a computer to play uh, this game it involves right. extensive artificial intelligence which uh, and and then one of one of the guys uh, suggested why don't we do a multiplayer game where both sides are human beings and not computer right. and yes very well fine and it took us about 6 months to actually build the first game where me and me my mom sitting in the living room in my house me sitting in my office we could play a game of rummy that was the best moment of my life so far that's wow. where the discovery of oh wow this is interesting yeah. that people i could connect uh uh friends and families over a game of rummy on the internet so there was no money nothing etc etc there right. was no revenue for and 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 then probably in a month from then we could put that on a on a on a server my friends from us and me played this game wow. on the internet and this is this 2005 2000, yeah this was in 2006 sometime Six. around uh, it's india uh, early July. days of internet i mean definitely internet gaming internet was there but no gaming yeah. as such yeah and i think that was the moment when i decided this is something that i want to take up full time and uh, uh so we started building on the team you know a couple of friends invested into the business uh, pulled in some friends and family money and and built it up started working on a real product where you know we could have hundreds of players thousands of players uh, mm-hmm. you know play amongst themselves and uh, this 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 started and 2007 we launched a play for fun portal we coined the word name ace 23 which is yeah. ace number 2 thre which is a sequence of cards in a game of rummy so we were wondering what to, what to name the brand as and uh, and also the corporate entity as head uh, digital and digital works is now it was called head infotech which my father okay. coined the word because we know that this is a game that is all skill we talk about skill gaming and etc and stuff so we wanted something to do with brain etc and then 
post the 2007 for a couple of years uh, we tried various revenue models whether it's subscription based uh, we tried to do a subscription model where we said you can play a hundred games free of cost but if you want to play more games you got to pay for it right and right. Uh, that that model never worked out there so for two mm -hmm. years at least and uh, uh, until 2009 we were uh, running literally a play for fun we were giving out uh, in those days uh, small iPods the iPods just came in and okay, yeah. iPods are like mu music players I would say the Sony music mp3 players, players yeah so we were, yeah MP mp3 players you're right yeah. they were the we were giving out as prizes and we're getting customers. So so we had about 100,000 customers in a span of about a year and a half, about 18 months. Right. And people were very happy. We, and we built the product on user feedback. We used to talk to customers. We used to look at the charts. We used to get, after every game, ask feedback. And every customer who played on the website were like, wow, I can play Rami with real people. And they started mm -hmm. giving us feedback on the product every day. And, and we built and the product matured. Uh, in 2009, uh, uh, this was the... And at that period of time, I also happened to... While, while I was spending a lot of time and money on the business, I was not earning anything. So I had to look for a job to, to, to meet oh, my needs. Yeah. So that's when I saw this opportunity with a company called... Uh, uh, party gaming which has their india subsidiary in hyderabad uh, there's uh, a opening in the product management uh, product product role which i applied and managed to get in spent about a year and a half there learned uh, understood the entire economics or the mechanics of online poker how big it was it was a very large industry and and the company was a listed company with over a few million dollars in revenue every day and, and just try to understand how uh, online poker worked at scale and and then at work for a year and a half then decided this could work very well in india quit my job uh, went ahead raised some angel funding and uh, redid the revenue model uh, got a couple of lawyer friends who gave to help me get some legal opinions around the legality of this business, etc. Right. How we structure it, and uh, confidently giving us a green signal that this is a game of skill, absolutely. Because I know that this game is played for money. It's only interesting when right. you play for money. Otherwise, it's right. not fun. Even right. if you're playing for one rupee or two rupees, you know. So we figured okay. out a revenue model that was similar to the online poker business globally. To map it to Rummy and launch the real money business in 2009. Wow, and, and this is still uh, super early for any sort of gaming. Forget correct. RMG yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. in India. I mean, I, I think yeah. that's the that's the birth of this industry. I would say yeah. today, as we speak, is a multi-billion-dollar industry with hundreds of companies. Correct. Uh, and at the same time, one of our competitors also launched uh, the exactly similar product and. Uh, and uh, I think, and from there on, uh, things changed very, very, you know, fast. Uh, we could see month-on-month -month revenues going up by 300%, 400%, day-on-day day revenues going up. Consumers started flowing in. When we started spending money on marketing, uh, 2010, uh, a VC fund cold called me in my office and said, we want to invest in your business. Four weeks from the call, the money was in the bank. Fastest ever wow. VC deal that has been done in India. And the first ever VC deal uh, in the gaming space. Indian nice. gaming space. Wow. Uh, Matrix, yeah. Matrix uh, invested in us in 2010. Then we moved from a startup to a, a, a properly run board, you know, corporate governance. Uh, systematically uh, started building the business up and increasing the team. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had a great startup team of about 20, 25 people. They're still with us. Most of them are still with us. Amazing. Started hiring people. And uh, right now we are about 500 uh, odd uh, employees. And, and I think I think it was all the team that, that, that helped us build this business up. So 2009, uh, uh, 2010, once the VC, VC money came in, uh, we, we, we invested into marketing, we invested into products. Uh, uh, revenues, etc., and stuff started scaling up. As I said, you know, uh, 
right. year on year growth profitability uh, we, i always strongly personally i always strong, you know always believed in uh, fundamentals of doing business is to make profit and, correct and that was a motto in the company so we were not splashing money out you know spending money acquiring customers hoping i'll make correct. profit later but if i spend today what am i making today what am i making tomorrow what am i making next week what am i making next month this was right. been a philosophy and and consumers were very important and uh, we had to build because this involved financial transactions this involved money uh, it right. was very important for us to build a trust amongst our consumers and thanks to our well, thanks to the approach we had right from to day one that we have a lot of lo- loyalty of our consumers you know we we hmm. are one of uh, we we have built that trust amongst our customers that this is a safe platform uh, there's no fraud there's no cheating there are no bots you know etc and hmm. stuff and then and then we saw the industry grow we, people saw the success of ours and 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 uh, there's so many other companies that that came up to evolve uh at the same time uh, we also saw a few backlashes in terms of regulatory issues around uh, a few states or a few governments or uh, you know talking about this being gambling which i personally don't never believe in this is more of entertainment for us uh right i think life itself is a gamble <laughs> but uh, of course know, but as long as as long as you're responsible and you know your limits it's entertainment uh, i really strongly believe in this and uh, we we have uh, part of our business protecting our consumers you know we have followed very strict responsible gaming limits right from day one we always had mm-hmm. limits daily mm-hmm. limits weekly limits monthly limits and that kind of uh, built uh, the confidence in us that you know uh, we can scale this business up to a very large uh, user base so right. and, and and yeah that's been the journey and come to 2017 uh, uh, by then we had a list of investors and and then we uh, we had a, a a transaction where a company was uh, bought over by a canadian private equity fund along with some mm-hmm. local uh, investors uh, for close to about a 100 million dollar valuation and and that was again the only and the first acquisition in the gaming space in india it was a complete yeah. uh, secondary transaction it was it's not a fundraise and and the company never needed money the company was always generating mm-hmm. cash and and investing in growth Uh, right. always believed in uh, investment into growth in the right areas of product then we uh, incubated a startup which was a uh, and and then the fantasy sports started picking up in india that's when we correct found the opportunity and 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 kind of related to the business that we do uh, so we thought we should diversify ourselves into other gaming as well so incubated a startup uh, invested in them acquired them and okay. then we merged it into our parent entity as uh in the fantasy sports platform at the same time mm-hmm. uh, i also we also got an opportunity to acquire the domain cricket.com uh, and we thought yes. this will add value to our uh, portfolio so we also we acquired the domain we built the cricket.com uh, platform we have a strong team who works on it uh, cricket.com is more into uh, uh, data analytics on cricket right. you know prediction algorithms etc and stuff it has no gaming or betting in it but it's more a information portal but more engagement for a average okay. cricket fan where he can play around with a lot of data so so we have it then we rebranded h23 to a23.com right. merged our fantasy business into one brand which we call it a23.com which is a super brand we have and then mm-hmm. we 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 also bought a couple of games from third party vendors we integrated carrom pool we now we are working on a couple of other new games and and the vision is to create a23 as one of india's largest you know entertainment uh, 
so you know business and, and under various a to 3 as a super product so we call ourselves a to 3 rummy a to 3 fantasy a to 3 casually uh etc right. and stuff <laughs> and uh, uh uh post the transaction in 2017 i think uh, we again we invested into growth all the profits that we make we invest into growth scale up the teams uh as of now uh, yeah uh, i think uh, that's been the story until now and, and uh, let's see how where it takes us for the next 5 years no uh, thanks for uh, you know that whole background deepak i think i you know it's it's 17 years of your journey it's not small at all and the amount of work that you all have done the kind of innovation the kind of let's say like you said like you path breaking sort of you know uh, into the gaming industry real money gaming as it stands today i mean a lot of people who are coming into this industry today see it as as if it was a natural extension of all sorts of gaming but i think you guys saw this a long back a long time ago and that's why uh, this was able to sort of come into fruition and i do want to talk a little bit about the let's say the challenges that you also faced Uh, but before i do that let me call out take a quick break and come back and continue sure. the conversation i have a very funny story can i say it hi i'm shweta i'm navya's mother hi i'm shweta i'm navya's mother <laughs> i am navya's nani my name is jaya bachcha hmm i got nothing over here guys <laughs> It's a big day for me. Okay, start. What the hell? I was saying something very nice and empowering and you just interrupted me. Don't complain, don't explain, never explain. <laughs> Let me say it. I have my little secrets. Hello madam, how are you? I got your number. I told you don't get me started. Mom. When you want to do money pinching, you are also very good. I've seen you. I've noticed. <laughs> I finished this many books you're still on your first book I finished so many books you're I'm like what the hell leave me alone <laughs> definition of love has changed today I'm too old for all this Navya there's a wonderful lake go and jump into and it and drown and drown and she does oh my god stop <laughs> what are you saying what the hell it's important to have friends my best friends have been Navya and Shweta oh I have a problem saying no. You better learn. It's the it's, it's the, the best, best wo- word. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> okay. What the hell? What the hell, Navya? You're saying this podcast is called What the Hell, Navya? I have at least three What the Hell, Navya episodes in a day. Welcome back everyone. Uh Deepak uh, you've been telling us about your journey the entire journey of Head Digital Works and now of course the multiple brands that you have all the way from Ace to 3 to Fanfy to cricket.com. Uh all of this as we know today forms of course a very large part of the real money gaming industry in India and you were mentioning towards the end about you know your own spate of challenges whether it's regulatory or perception that you constantly have to deal with of course the country has gone through a lot uh, i think you all have been instrumental in you know putting the let's say intent of customers forward in the right way so that you know it's this is obviously recognized as a skill gaming uh, product could you tell us as to what was what were some of those incidents which you at any point which you felt that this is just some that your hands are tied or that you know you had to really sort of work to change whether it was a law or whether it was user perception overall uh and how and how you think of it in the future is this is this over is this done or do you think more stuff like this will keep coming given the size of the business see i think uh, it all started even in 2012 if i remember that when, when the madras uh, high court ruled that playing rummy was for money was gambling and we had to stop that was the first time we had a regulatory backlash and we had to block tamil nadu customers from playing on our yeah. side and and we were in litigation for about 2 to 3 years where we had and then the supreme court gave a judgment that games of skill are not 
uh, do not amount to gambling and hence uh, cannot be uh, banned or, or uh, the, the gaming acts do not cover them. But, but, but I think the main reason for these regulatory issues or the bureau, you know, the government's taking such decisions is, is, is how these businesses are perceived, especially when, when there are media articles written uh, about, right. about uh, how these companies are uh, uh, in, at least before 2017, we could we, we we used to see a lot of media articles saying these business these companies are doing gambling, these companies are taking money, they are illegal, etc. Yeah. So we had to actually educate a lot of people in this country about the law, about the business model, about who we are, because there was always. When people saw ads about H two three, they thought H2, this is some under the carpet business run by yeah. some, uh, you know, some uh, under, you know, somebody sitting in Dubai or somebody somewhere you know, outside the okay. world. Somebody's, you know, they didn't even know who we are. So I think we we actually through our through a federation, then we formed a couple of the large competitors. We got together, formed a federation. Uh, we went and reached and talked to media. We talked to bureaucrats, we talked to the governments, we gave representations of who we are. We are like any other startup that's VC funded. We, are here. we all come from good educational backgrounds. We have employees, we have great teams working for us from IITs, IIMs, you know, and we are like any other startup. So people had to look, we had to educate people who we are, you know. Yeah. And and once that happened, uh, I think, I think, recent. That's, that that actually has a significant change in how uh, governments or media or everybody looks at us today. Today, people talk about this as, yeah. a, as a as a legitimate industry, you know, that has been mature. But this was not the case about eight, seven, seven, eight years back. Yeah. So we had to put effort. We had to make the change happen in this country. And and uh, and I think we've been successful so far. And and but today there's a new problem. As if you ask me if the problems will continue, there are new problems. Now we know that there's skill gaming industry, but there is also the illegal gambling market. Uh, you know that is being that is picking up illegal companies from outside the country operating in India, and mm -hmm. unfortunately everything is clubbed into one. So we have to separate ourselves. We are not there. We are this. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, so, so I, if you are, if, uh, to answer your question about future, globally it's proven these issues will be there for the industry forever, you know, some mm. way or so other. In some way or form, yeah. Some way of, yeah. some way, some form of the other, these will keep coming right. and this is the way, as long as we, we are truthful to the business, truthful to our consumers, our employees, right. and we are doing this business responsibly, legitimately within the legal boundaries of this country. Whenever there right. is a state that bans a business, we very strictly stop consumers from playing there, from, from that particular right. state. And uh, we, we are very, you know, as soon as you abide by the law, I think the industry will mature as, as, we, as, 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 we, as the time passes. And I think more, more governments will understand. Of course, and and it will come to a stage where a regulation will be needed, and and we we we, are, we want to see a regulation. As I said, there is a, this bigger problem that started with the legal gaming guys. Enforcement okay. is a very big issue in this country. Even though you say something is not legal in the in in a, in a state or this country, people still operate. People. Still How do you sell. ensure it? Yeah. How do you enforce the law? And uh, yeah. We want to work with governments to assist them and help them in, in enforcing laws and, and, and uh, bring in a secure digital uh, world, a digital environment for, for people to play such games uh, securely. Yeah. Safely. So, so I, I actually have a question connected to that, given that you're a product company, you're a, like, like you said in your story, you're a through and through tech company from the day one, right? I mean, of course, you're enabling uh, enabling a game which is probably very traditional and sort of ingrained in our culture in that sense. But you're allowing that to happen digitally. You're and 
you've built products and uh, your entire system with a lot of tech in it and i think given the time frame that you mentioned you were early on let's say fintech in a, in some ways in your product as well you were early in gaming in general so game mechanics so there's a lot of tech which i think your products have been pioneering in uh, especially in india uh, can you tell us a little bit about that like what were the early days of let's say payment collection and money management and Uh, the early days of making a, a platform fair you know there's always this concept in gaming about how do you make your platform fair how do you do balancing of teams and individuals all of that so what what are your principles there and if you could talk a little bit about the uniqueness of your tech part so I, i think on the first part on the tech part i'm actually a very bad guy to talk about technology or software because uh, i I have no clue about you're, what you're the business guy yes of course what programming course. does uh, in fact uh, uh, i think when we started off uh, i think we 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 go we've gone with the world you know uh, 15 years back the technology we had was pure java you know right. it was only a desktop big window screen and a large uh, server at the back running java machines etc and stuff i think we as the as the world changed especially i think the biggest change that we our generation were able to see is the shift from desktop to mobile devices it happened right. very fast right. i remember 2014 15 when we had to launch our mobile version of the game the shift just in 3 months it went from 100% desktop to like 10% desktop wow 3 to 6 months yeah and That's to adapt to that changing or oh. right and and to adapt to that change in this world was the most difficult thing when it comes to tech because whatever we built so far we built it assuming that people will play on a large computer and uh, the ux to ui to functionality everything was designed around that and this sudden shift from desktop to mobile so we had to work on a lot of changes in our product and mm-hmm. very fast we couldn't wait we didn't want to uh, we didn't want to fall back on you know miss that wave because there were yeah. correct miss that wave and and we saw competitors and new companies that evolved and they were only doing mobile only app, you know uh, games and etc right. and stuff i think that was the biggest technology revolution that i personally was able to experience you know in this business and and i think we did well in in, 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 in. yeah we were though i would say uh, to be honest we were a little slow maybe because mm-hmm. i didn't know technology and some of us we had to get new people for the mobile technology shift etc and stuff sure. but uh, we were a little slow but but we did it well i would say we did it great and in terms of uh, your second question about being fair etc and stuff so that's what i as i mentioned that building trust was an important factor everything that we do in this business in this company whatever innovation we make whatever new things that we launch uh, there is a clear communication to our customers there's clear feedback from consumers there's 24/7 support we we hear our customers uh, we resolve issues immediately and uh, there's been a number of audits on our platform uh, about the mm. genuinity of the customer you know we we were, we wanted to be continuously to audits uh, to keep all the games fair mm. we have random number generators which are certified etc and stuff but uh, yeah we 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 no, have to keep that uh, name going right it's important yeah and it's it's the high standard that you have to set for yourself i guess that this is how we will grow and we like i think the early principles you set uh still hold true for yeah i think the early point. principles of consumer trust you know and consumer satisfaction consumer trust uh, uh it was it, it still flows in the in the in the company and, and right from day one you know and that that is kind of trust is a very 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 uh, big word you know uh, of course very, uh, it has a lot of deep meanings to it uh, 
uh, in, in relationships right. to employees, to people, to consumers. So, so I think that's where our focus has been and, and we've been as I think that's the biggest uh, strength that we have and biggest secret to our success as well. No, that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, Deepa, you obviously like your journey has been amazing so far and uh, there's a long way to go. I'm sure there's always new horizons to, uh, you know, beat. What are your thoughts on, uh, I think early on you mentioned that the, there will, there's so much more headroom to, you know, go to. But what are your, on closing notes, what are your thoughts for the next couple of years for the company, uh, for your team? Uh, are you, what are you looking at as a next big milestone uh, for? <laughs> I think, I, see, I, we don't work on finite goals. We work on what we do today, what we do, what, what is the best that we give to our consumers. I think the vision is very clear that we want to build A to 3 as one of India's most trusted and largest entertainment portal. Mm -hmm. Having said that, with the current portfolio of games, we want to add more games to it where people will have more engagement on different other games, uh, whether right. it's casual games, esports, or etc. Uh, and, and build a consumer base or user uh, base. Uh, I, I don't want to put a number to it because once I put a number to it, it's like it I could up. achieve it in one year's time. I don't know. Right. Uh, so, right. so I could achieve it in one year's time and achieve, achieve it in two years. So we don't really set ourselves revenue targets or uh, consumer targets, etc. What we say is whatever we do, whatever, how much ever we do, principles are the same that even if I have 100 customers, I need to keep my customers happy. I need to make profit. Right, whether it's hundred customers, thousand customers, or a million customers. It's a good, good one. And we're not we're not chasing consumers here. We're building products that consumers will love to use. And uh, yeah. obviously, we will have to spend money on marketing and retention because their competitors also doing it. So, yeah, the, and and for at least I keep telling our employees that. We also have to adapt to changes that happen in this world, right? You know, today, what we saw with the mobile devices, uh, COVID has taught us a lot, you know, how, how things yeah. could change people's lives. And we should be able to prepare for anything, you know, and everything and uh, yeah. adapt to changes. So we continue to grow the business, continue to add uh, games, continue to add consumers. Let's see where we go. As long as the, the graph is always on Going the right up and to the right project, yeah. up, 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 right, right trajectory, we are happy. Investors are happy. We want to create value Perfect. here, both for investors, create value for our employees who also own, have stock options, etc. Maybe at some day, you know, let's see how it goes. You know, I don't want to promise anything. So I don't like to make promises that I don't know whether uh, they sure. will be able to. Sure. Them. No, no. I, I, but I know that keeping a healthy life, keeping a healthy business, uh, because I remember somebody, one of my investors uh, told me that businesses are bought and not sold. So I'm not selling my business. I'm, I'm, I'm building my business. Let's see what happens. Wonderful. Wonderful. I mean, uh, you know, on that note, I would, I would love for you to share where, let's say, everyone listening to our show today, if, if they want to let's say, ask you for advice, if they're getting into the RMG space or any digital entertainment space or even looking to work with you, where's, where's the best place to reach out to uh, if they want I'm to? I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm I'm not so active on Twitter or uh, Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, but uh, uh, my profile is on LinkedIn. Uh, Perfect. Can, we'll... uh, please, uh, any day, connect with me, send me a message. I, I usually reply to all messages on LinkedIn. I, I check LinkedIn every day, every day. So, yeah. We'll, we'll share the details for sure. And of course, for everyone listening in again, if you love this episode or like listening to our conversation with Deepak, please uh, leave us a review, leave Shunyavan a review wherever you're listening to this podcast as well. Uh, and Deepak, thank you once again for the time uh, and genuinely for sharing your journey. It's, it's very inspiring. It's great to see that, you know, you've, 
unlike maybe many other startups who I've spoken to and the, the lot of startups out there, you from day one had like solid principles on the kind of business, the quality of the business. business and of course the entertainment goal that you set for yourself and the company so uh, it's great to hear it and thank you for sharing